wake up. My name is Daniel Vallis from InformedChristians.com, a website ministry devoted to discerning current events from a Christian and biblical perspective. We are commanded to be sober, be vigilant, and to be ready. And we find ourselves at a very late hour, with many warnings that demand our attention that time is very short. It is May 2nd, and we've looked at a lot of enemy activity at this time too as well, but the celestial signs and the prophetic signs and the shadows and patterns from Scripture tell us that this time is very short. We have high expectation of Christ's return. And the enemy is very busy gathering their forces, rallying their troops, and making sure they are ready. And as Christians, we should be able to look at Scripture and the celestial signs and be excited and be getting ourselves ready. And as the Bible says, as we see the day approaching, we should encourage each other and provoke each other to love and to good works and so much the more as we see the day approaching. We see the day approaching. We see that time is very short. We see so many warnings by the enemy that they are about to be unrestrained. They know it. We see the prophetic signs. They're also telling us he is about to be unrestrained. It is high time to wake up, to cast off, to trim off anything that is keeping us from close fellowship with Christ, keeping us from where we need to be, keeping us from striving for things of eternity. Now is the time to examine our life with extra vigilance and be extra sober against anything that will creep into our life and distract us from what we should be doing now and being focused and being ready and be shining bright for Christ's return. The warnings are all around us right now. And even the enemy is putting up blatant warnings to his disciples that sudden destruction is about to come. In our last video, we talked briefly about Obama's mic drop and also the Queen's mic drop. And Jonathan Kleck has made a very good breakdown video of a lot of the messaging in his videos recently. So I'm not going to rehash that. I do disagree with him on the Antichrist, obviously, though. But he did make a very good point that the gesture that Obama made when he dropped the mic is the equivalent of F.U. He's basically telling the audience and the American audience F.U. He basically flipped the bird, but he did it with the U.K. version, so it wouldn't be as recognizable here in America. I've said it before that he's the scapegoat. He's going to be the one bringing down the destruction of America and taking a lot of focus and attention. He's a decoy, but he is involved in the destruction of America. And at this last White House Correspondence Dinner that he was at, he signed off basically telling every American, F you. There's no polite way to put that. The President of the United States is telling you, sudden destruction is about to come. And at the exact same moment, he's making it very clear and candid what he thinks of you. The enemy is putting out Blatant warnings that they are about to kill a lot of people. Sudden destruction is about to come. Why are people not waking up? Because they want to continue to dream. Of course, we talk about the Antichrist in our video, The Antichrist Returns, and also in our video, The Antichrist Fail. But Obama is definitely involved in the destruction of America, and he's just basically signaled that it is about to happen. And we've seen a lot of warnings from the enemy to wake up. Satan's disciples recognize a lot of symbolism and the messaging in it, and they take warning, and they rise up, and they do what they need to do. They're not asleep. When they see all these signs, they're getting ready. They're not living as though life goes on. They're making different life plans. They have different objectives, different goals, different things that they're pouring their life into at this very moment, and they're going to focus their attention on their goal, their race that they have, their mystery of iniquity. Christian when we see the biblical signs and we see the celestial signs and we even see the enemy telling us that time is almost up, that they are about to bring sudden destruction, why won't we wake up? Now is the time to wake up. And Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He actually gains when he gives legal notice to Christians and Christians don't pay attention to it. All these warnings that he's been giving out really blatantly that should have caused some eyebrows to be raised at the least with a lot of these warnings with the triumphal arch and all the things being lit up in red and the blood flowing at the least on top of everything else that we've covered. Satan actually gains ground when he puts out the notice, illegal notice to Christians telling us to wake up and we don't listen. He will use that against Christians later. The accuser of the brethren. He serves legal notice and it will be used against many Christians very soon. Time is almost up. They won't listen to the warnings in Scripture, and they won't even listen to Satan's warnings either. 
We've even seen a lot of messaging by Satan directed toward the church. And even warning his disciples that the church needs to wake up. And the church that doesn't wake up is going to be staying behind. They show their hand quite often that they know the church needs to wake up. But they also know that the church is sleeping. And they laugh at Christians because most Christians will live for the world and the dreams and the fantasy and the goals that they give them. And they even tell them, wake up. But they don't want to wake up. They don't want to serve Christ. They don't want to live for Christ. They want to stay in their dream, in their fantasy world. The days of Noah and Lot, living as though life goes on, ignoring the warnings. That's what you have to do to stay in a lucid dream. You have to ignore the warnings. Willingly ignore the warnings. And when even the accuser of the brethren gives warnings, you can be guaranteed it's going to be used against you. There are so many warnings going on out right now about the gateway and the triumphal entry of the Antichrist, the beast, and that the church needs to wake up and there's going to be some serious consequences for the church that doesn't wake up. Just today, May 1st, which we talked about is a very important occult day, a news story happened to get attention on the Mail Online, a UK newspaper. Boat made from cardboard sets sail on the Thames and it doesn't sink. This vessel, which has been named This Way Up, Okay, so they made a cardboard boat, varnished it up, named it This Way Up, and they took a television presenter from a television show with them to film it as they went down the Thames River. So this wasn't just some group of guys. This is someone who had connections with the TV company. They're doing a little presentation about it, and they're making sure it gets in the news. This was done deliberately. And we just talked about the Thames River and the importance of time. And it's very interesting they named it This Way Up which is a reference to the up arrows on material that have to be oriented right side up. A boat going down the river Thames, the river of time, named this way up, indicating upward, this way up. It, they didn't call it this end up, they called it this way up, indicating time. There's a connection with time and going up. It's time. And when we look at where this little production was featured at, we instantly recognize the terrain from what we've been studying a lot. We see the Isle of Dogs, which was featured in The Wizard of Oz. Right below that is the Royal Observatory. That's right there, too, as well. This whole area is loaded with time references. The Olympic Stadium up there at the top, which was from 2012 Olympics. And then right down there is the London City Airport. Keep that in mind. And then the actual filming and little boat ride happened in this little inlet right there. It's still in the Thames River, but it's a little inlet. But keep in mind that it's right up the river from the London airport, this way up, hello, and it's closely associated with time. So let's zoom in and look at the area where it happened at. So it's just a little inlet, and they went basically from the end toward the Excel Center, where it's going to be displayed. But you can tell from the video that they have on the website and the pictures that they're heading up the river. Again, time, heading toward the Excel Center. So this indicates where they started from and where they are going, the direction that they are going. And notice that they are passing the Ibis Hotel. And they even make sure they stop and let the boat float around a little bit so the photographer can take a picture of them right in front of the Ibis Hotel, right while they're sitting on the River Thames. This is very important. The Ibis is a bird that primarily inhabits wetlands and forests and plains, but it also has symbolic and mythological reference. The African sacred Ibis was an object of religious veneration in ancient Egypt, particularly associated with the deity, or otherwise commonly referred to in Greek as Thoth. He is responsible for writing, mathematics, measurement, and time, as well as the moon and magic. Okay, so Ibis is closely associated with the Greek god Thoth. And he's associated with time. We'll get back to that in a moment. But it's also interesting that according to local legend, the northern bald ibis was one of the first birds that Noah released from the ark as a symbol of fertility. Now that's just a local legend, but it is interesting that it has a connotation and association with Noah's ark, Noah's boat, too, as well. Now in our article, Time in Tomorrowland, and you can find the link in the description box, we talk about thought who is the equivalent to the Greek Hermes, Mercury, associated with time, the messenger of the gods who travels between the dimensions and the worlds. This is used a lot in media. If you haven't yet, check out our articles on Time in Tomorrowland, Time Cern in the Bible, Time and Back to the Future. We have article versions and printable PDFs of 
all of these and also a video version of Time Stone in the Bible. So it's very significant that going down this River Thames right near the airport in a boat called This Way Up, they stop and pause and make sure the TV broadcaster takes their picture in front of the Ibis Hotel. This was not accidental. Now when we look at where they came from, obviously they had to launch their boat from the boat launch. So let's just see if there's anything interesting over there. Where did they launch from? They launched from the Wake Up Docklands. This is where they put in at, on the River Thames, in a boat that recalls Noah's Ark, reference to Thoth and Ibis and Mercury, time, and they launch from Wake Up. This whole thing is a message to wake up. It's time. There's about to be a vertical exodus, and this goes hand in hand with the other signs that we've seen them give, that they know the church bride that is awake and ready and rising up. They are about to leave. They are about to be taken this way up. So here, on May 1st, they're putting out a blatant message and warning. Wake up. It's time. The enemy is putting out this message. And on the same day, a very famous Midtown Manhattan Cathedral is engulfed in flames. A 160-year-old Orthodox Christian church in Manhattan is consumed by fire. And it's completely gutted and destroyed. Got a lot of news attention because it happened in New York and the historicity of the church too as well. But on the same day, two different calls. One to the church, another one to wake up, reference to Noah's Ark and time and mercury and all that that we've been seeing already tied to Thames and then also on the exact same day, an event related to a church, drawing our attention to it in a very sober manner. And there are pictures all over the news of this church being completely gutted and destroyed with sudden destruction. The church that is not ready, the church bride that does not rise up and wake up, is going to be left behind with the unbelievers and the hypocrites. That's what Jesus plainly told his disciples. We've covered those verses already. The church that gets left behind is going to go through the tribulation. And I believe this church fire was very deliberate as a message at this time on May 1st. They made sure one of the other pictures from the back included Dumbo moving storage. Dumbo, the flying elephant from Disney. They happened to just make sure that was right there next to the church that got destroyed with sudden destruction. This wasn't coincidence, this is a message. This way up, the wake bride is about to leave. There is about to be an exit, and there's also about to be destruction and judgment on the church that's left behind. It's interesting, some of the pictures they showed of the church prior to destruction, the massive chandelier of light, had some very interesting heraldry on it that instantly reminded us of the phoenix. And maybe it was just me, but when I looked at these pictures and saw the fire gushing out of that church building, of the large circle or hole in the front, it instantly reminded me of the Honda commercial that they put out in connection with the Trafalgar Gate. Even used very similar buttressing for the architecture, reference to the large circular opening at the front as well. It definitely reminded me of each other. And that is why I definitely think this was a message. This way up. Dumbo. Wake up. Wake up. So then the news came out today as well that the National Day of Prayer in America this year, which is on May 5th, the same day as Ascension, the theme that they have picked for this event is Wake Up America. Wake up, America. Wake up, Christian. This National Day of Prayer event is, is largely politicized, and I, I don't trust the organization of it at all, so I find this very suspicious that they're putting out this warning, Wake Up America, and the timing this year lands on May 5th. Christian, you need to wake up a whole lot sooner than May 5th. You need to wake up right now. You need to start rising up right now. You need to start casting off right now. You need to start trimming off right now. You need to put on the armor of light right now. We are out of time. It's time to wake up. We are out of time. The world leaders are telling you straight up that there's about to be sudden destruction. The President of the United States gets up and basically flips off the entire American populace. They know sudden destruction is coming, and they don't care a whit about you. Time is so short. Why are you sleeping? Now is the time to rise up. We have heard the trumpet calls at midnight. The bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time, with what little time we have left, 
where we must rise up from the way we have been living, from the dreams we have been pursuing, from the things we've been pouring our life into, and pour your life and energy and all that you have into pursuing Christ, rising up to meet Him, to be as close as you can to Him. Because very soon, that's going to be the only thing that will matter. Not your stupid dreams. Not your fantasy world that you're living in. It's going to matter. Are you close to Christ? Are you shining bright for Christ? That's what's going to matter. We are out of time. Are you awake? Are you rising up? Are you shining bright? Or are you asleep? Dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. When he comes, how will he find you? Sleeping? Dreaming? Or will he find you close by his side? Because you have risen up. You have cast off the things that kept you away from Christ, from his word, from fellowship with him, from time with him. You have cast everything aside so that you could be close to the heart of God. Because you love him more than you love this world. Jesus asked Simon Peter, Lovest thou me more than these? That is the question of what our life and what our faith demonstrates, who we love. Who do you love? Who do you love? Maranatha.